straighten out the camera. I'm gonna eat some breakfast right now. It's my overnight oats. First time I'm trying it. And okay, I think I may put a little much milk in there. Don't see if you can don't know if you can see that, but I may put a little much milk in there, but it's okay to me. It's my first time ever doing it, so I wanna see what like all the hype is about. And well, let this chill all overnight, so we're gonna see what it's like. Okay, that first spoonful is mostly just like yogurt and uh, oatmeal, like four blueberries, so I'm gonna dig deeper in. Ah, it's right here. Let's try it now. I did put some honey in, so I'm gonna see how that goes. Hmm. I actually have that back. Yeah, guys, that was way too much milk in there, but first time ever doing overnight oats, so now I learned, or at least I hope I did. And I did that because it's a very easy breakfast to make. All you need to do is wake up, grab it, grab a spoon to start eating it. I got some fruit in there, got some protein, and of course, oats are a quick digesting carb. If you're ever looking for a quick digesting carb before your workouts, either do like a Rice Krispie treat, like I do, it has a little bit of sugar for like that mental rush you need, or try some oatmeal. That's also going to be a quick digesting carb. It's not going to make you feel full for a long time like potatoes will. I made that mistake before of uh, eating potatoes before workout. Never do that again. But first time trying it, now I learned don't put so much damn milk in. You also may be wondering what time it is in the morning. Well, it's actually a little bit after 9, more like 9.20. And you might be saying, whoa, dude, why did you like sleep that late? You're not to be successful, oh my word. I can't believe you slept that late. Well, here's the thing. I know myself, on my days off, I am like, I'm sleeping in because it's a little treat to myself and I'm a guy that I need my sleep. Like, a lot of these so-called successful entrepreneurs that post all these shitty memes and like shitty quotes on their Instagram, I need my sleep. I can't operate in four or five hours of sleep like these so-called successful entrepreneurs on Instagram. So I really need to get my sleep. Well, I've got about a half hour before I'm going to head out to the gym. Got to get changed, get my gym bag ready, then head out. Got shoulders today, but that's not what the video is about. But I'm going to show you a snippet of what my shoulder routine looks like. So let's get to the gym. Yes, if you want to ask that question, I'm wearing a black top and white shorts. Today is literally the only day I can wear these white shorts. The game will not be the only day. Actually, yeah, one of like, the only two days I can actually wear these white shorts. So, I find time to wear them somehow. I'm just going to let you know how hard that was to do when I was holding my aqua jug in the other hand. And yes, I joined the aqua jug Colts. Here's a little trick I'm gonna show you for before you go to workout. Turn the dial on your car's temp all the way to hot. And then once it warms up a little bit, once the engine warms up, you crank it up and you just blast the heat. That way you really don't have to warm up as much when you go to the gym. And also, it's a requirement that if you go into the gym, you listen to some of the angriest music you can find, which for me, the album I've been listening to on repeat because it's so great is F8 by Five Finger Death Punch. It's an amazing album. Let me know in the comment section down below if you like it. Or just give this video a one of these if you do like it. So it actually took me kind of long to get here because I realized halfway here, I forgot my mask. It probably like, bro, they probably have masks at the gym. I forgot my earbuds. I'm not going to work out without my earbuds. But now, I'm finally here. So the workout is going to commence right now.
poopster this morning. My phone was a bit of a poopster, or maybe the owner was, and the camera actually died halfway through my workout. I think it ended with the reverse seated, like plate loaded overhead press, and I still was missing my elbow reverse fly, my barbell shrug, my ab workout. I missed all that. It died halfway through, and well, I think the owner was a little bit of a poopster to it and didn't charge it last night, so you can yell at him in the comment section below. Now let's actually get to the part of the video that you are wanting to be here for, and that is four exercises for insane chest growth. And guys, these are the exercises I have seen the most chest growth with, and if you know me, my chest has always been the weak point of my physique. Even though I did a lot of push-ups, I just could not grow my chest. And these are the exercises I use the most to really help boost my chest growth. So if you're ready for that, let's get into it. So first of all, the main job of the chest is to bring the arm cross body in horizontal adduction. Of course, it's going to do horizontal diagonal adduction up and down and also internally rotate the shoulder. But its main job is to bring the arm across the body in horizontal adduction. So any chest exercise you do has to be able to do that to be effective. Let's start out with the first one, which is the barbell bench press. I picked this one because, well, it's the most common chest exercise, and if guys would do it right, you would actually see some growth in your chest. So when doing it right, you do need to pin your shoulders back behind you. Well, of course they're gonna be behind you, but you need to pin your shoulders to the bench and create a bit of an arch in your back. I know you're taught to not arch your back, but in the bench press, it is essential that you do that. So you can protect your shoulder health and create that stable base from the push from. But this is going to be number one because you're going to be able to lift the most amount of weight on this movement. When you're able to lift the most amount of weight on this movement, you know what I'm going to say. You're going to have a lot of muscle breakdown. And how do we get muscle to build itself? We need to break it down first. If you're not breaking down a lot of muscle fiber, you can't grow your muscles. That's just how it works. But then also, you're going to have a huge muscle building stimulus since when your body, when you're lifting a lot of heavy weight, it goes, holy crap, I need to start building more muscle so I can lift this weight easier. You're going to get a huge muscle building stimulus, or aka hormonal stimulus, and a, mo a lot of progressive overload. And when it comes to progress, and when, it, and when it comes to muscle building, progressive overload is king of that. You gotta keep doing more than you did the weeks before. And this one, you're going to accomplish all that. You're going to be able to lift a lot of weight, and you're going to be able to progressively or at least overload it over time. Really begin to up your numbers on this movement. Now the next two are going to be because for most guys, your pec fibers aren't going to go straight across your body. They're either going to dip down slightly or dip up slightly. So it all depends on like, where you feel it the most. So this first one is going to be, and guys, the stations I need are always closed, always being used. It kind of annoys me when I'm trying to film this stuff. First one we're going to do is a plate loaded lower chest press, or basically a dip. So this one is really going to hit that lower part of the chest. If you've ever done dips correctly, you'll know how your lower chest feels after doing that. That's what it's going to hit. The lower chest is really going to create that definition in the chest. You know how it looks like some guys just don't have a chest? That's because their lower pec fibers are not well developed. And if you ever looked at Arnold, how the finest pecs were, that's because he had a really good lower chest. So it's really going to help define those pecs quite a bit. Now the second one we're going to do is an incline dumbbell bench press. Yes, I know it's the barbell bench. I usually do dumbbells, but guys, every single scene in the weight room was taken. Who knew that 11 in the afternoon my gym looked like freaking Times Square in New York City during New Year's Eve, but this one is really going to hit the upper pec fibers that branch up to hit the clavicular or attach the clavicular head of your chest. Or the collarbone. So a lot of guys, they do too much to develop their lower chest or do too much on the bench press, but then their chest looks flat. It falls flat. That's because they're not working on their upper chest. They're hitting too much of the lower chest because that feels good, and then the bench press because most pro we have all the exercises. Then they tend to forget the upper pec fibers. Guys, if you want to create that defined chest look, you need to hit your upper chest. That way, you look like you have a full chest. You actually look like you have a big chest. And for most guys, like I say, pec fibers are either going to be branching down or branching up slightly depending on who you are and obviously where you feel it most and where you're the strongest too. If you're the strongest in the dip, you got more lower chest fibers. If you're strongest in the inclined bench, you got more upper chest fibers. 
So those are really going to hit the majority of the chest fibers. Now the last one is going to be the dumbbell fly. And you know, I kind of bashed this in a video before where I called it one of the worst exercises of all time. That's because I had shoulder issues. So I thought because of my shoulder issues, I couldn't do the dumbbell fly. It was a terrible exercise. That was complete garbage. It actually is a great exercise because it's going to allow you to get that full stretch on the chest before you come forward and contract it. And what I would definitely suggest you doing, and yes, I know in this video I'm doing a cable fly, that's because the dumbbell area was literally looking like a mosh pit at an EDM festival. So when you do this, you really want to focus on twisting your elbows together to really get that chest contraction. And when you come all the way, you want to feel that stretch and you want to feel that contraction at the top. Now this one, I know Arnold really loved this exercise because you get the full motion or full range of the chest, which means you're going to break down a ton of muscle fiber. You don't want to be lifting world record weights on this, but still use this as a movement to really get your pack to move through this entire range of motion before you bring it to a contraction at the top. It's going to really produce not just a huge bump, but also you're really going to feel the next morning with how sore your muscles are from being broken down. Now guys, those are my top four exercises to see insane chest gains. And those are the ones I've seen the most amount of chest results or most amount of results in my chest with. So guys, if you like this video, give me a like, please. And also, if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section down below. And don't forget to subscribe for more content coming soon. Guys, I'll see you in the next video. Until then, let's get it, Sans. Is to go even further beyond!